What's happening, guys? How's it going? So, um, I felt like talking about Kel Brook for some reason. Now, obviously, with what happened the past weekend with, um, well, as I, as I make this video anyways, the past weekend, I might actually wait a few days before I upload this. We'll see. But yeah, as I record this, the, um, the past weekend was, of course, the Kel Brook Terence Crawford fight. We all know what happened there. And, um, I was kind of inspired to make this video by, um, Blue Collar Sports TV, aka Delboy, because he made a video, um, prior to the Terence Crawford Errol Spence fight. Sorry, Terence Crawford Kell Brook fight, where he was basically talking about, um, the fact that he personally viewed Kell Brook on the come up as one of the most talented British fighters around. And uh, he was basically talking about his disappointments with how Kell Brook's career ended up and how he basically thinks that Kell Brook, had he been managed a little bit better and had he made some um, adjustments to his career, like had he made some, some smarter decisions here and there, had he been a little bit more dedicated and um, fought the right opponents and, and been in the right weight division and whatnot, that he believes that Kell Brook could have potentially been an all-time great and could have been one of the best British fighters in modern years. And um, I, happen, I happen to agree. I really do. Now, when I was watching Kell Brook on the way up, um, I, I felt exactly the same way as what, as what Del Boy did, to be honest. He was always a fighter to me who um, showed a tremendous amount of raw talent. Um, you know, he, he wasn't your typical British fighter. You know, he was a fighter who was very unorthodox, um, you know, very naturally skilled. You know, he, he was a guy who had the type of natural talents. And I'm not saying that it's on the same level, but he had some of the same natural talents that somebody like Roy Jones Jr. had in the sense that he was a guy who was just so fast, so sharp, had such great reflexes. Um, you know, his athleticism and his power um, tended to make up for some of his technical flaws. But um, he also had very good technique. That's the thing that, that, that was very good about Kell Brook. I mean, the guy had a tremendous jab. Uh, he had tremendous punching technique. Like I said, he was extremely fast. And in his prime, he was incredibly fit. And um, what you'll notice looking at Kelbrook on the way up, you know, when he was dedicated and when he was in better shape, he was a guy who had a tremendous chin and um, tremendous resilience. Um, I always remember back when he fought Carson Jones the first time. And Carson Jones was one of these tough and rugged fighters who would always um, give a good account of himself. You know, very good chin, very experienced. You know, one of these real rough, tough guys who would, you know, pressure you and really, um, really put it on you. He was kind of like a Sakio Bika type, if you know what I mean. A guy who was crude and limited, but very tough and very durable. And uh, I remember him giving Kelbrook so many problems in that fight. And he hurt Kelbrook and stunned him several times. And Kelbrook showed a tremendous amount of resilience. And he came back really strong and dominated some of the later parts of that fight. And I remember watching that fight and just thinking that Kelbrook will go on to be something special. Like, this guy was a serious talent. I mean, I remember when he beat the crap out of Matthew Hatton. Um, I, I remember the build-up to that fight. That was seen as a, as a legitimate challenge for Kelbrook. But he absolutely demolished Matthew Hatton. He dropped him. He beat the crap out of him. He did a better job than Canelo did. Um, you know, did a better job than, than Van Heerden did. Like, like those other guys who beat Matthew Hatton around about that time. Um, you know, Kel Kelbrook did a, a better job than both of them, and he was able to drop Matthew Hatton, who was known for having a granite chin. So Kelbrook had tremendous power, tremendous speed. He was a very talented and athletic fighter. The problem is with Kelbrook that, and, and, and Delboy sort of sh touched on this in his video, he just wasn't managed in a way that would get the best out of him. Uh, when he won the world title, and he won the world title on the road, in America against Sean Porter in a in a pretty tough fight, but but I felt that Kelbrook won it pretty clearly. Um, there was a little bit too much clinching and holding for my liking, but he did outbox Sean Porter and won the fight pretty clearly. And when he did that and when he won the title, um, that really should have been a, a, a big um, platform for him to really get some big fights. But unfortunately, he was never really able to secure the big fights. Um, he spent years trying to get his rival Amir Khan in the ring, but Amir Khan kept ducking him like a coward. And Kelbrook really should have uh, turned his back on Amir Khan a lot sooner because I think he spent a lot of time 
trying to get that fight, whereas he really should have been focusing on other fights. Um, you know, when he was welterweight champion, he should have been trying to get himself some unifications and focusing on getting big fights because he genuinely had the talent to win those big fights, in my opinion. Unfortunately, the, you know, he just didn't have the quality opponents during his run as champion because of that, because he was focusing on Khan. And, I mean, he had some um, fringe contenders and some mandatories, like he took on the likes of Frankie Gavin. Frankie Gavin wasn't a bad fighter. I mean, he was a very good amateur, but as a professional, he was a fighter who was fighting above his natural weight class, and he was never the most dedicated athlete. You know, Frankie Gavin was one of these fighters, again, kind of similar to Kelbrook in the sense that he was a guy who had a lot of potential, but never really realised his potential. And um, yeah, he ended up getting stopped by Brook. Um, he fought the likes of Kevin Bizier and Jojo Dan. You know, those were just domestic level fringe contenders. And um, yeah, he never really had any serious victories as champion, which is a real shame because, of course, beating Sean Porter in his backyard, the way that he did was quite impressive. But he never really capitalised on that momentum. And he kind of went into obscurity, Kelbrook. You know, he kind of got some easy opponents that didn't really get the excitement going for his um, career, basically. And like I said, he was focusing on Amir Khan. He wasn't really um, getting any serious victories. He wasn't really learning from the fights he was taking. So then when it came to his big opportunity, which is, of course, where he fought Gennady Golovkin, that's basically where it all fell apart for Brooks. Now... A lot of people say that he shouldn't have taken the fight and that it was that fight, you know, and, and the decision to take that fight then which ruined his career. Um, I actually disagree with that personally. I don't think it was that fight that ruined his career. I do think it was a contributing factor because, of course, in the fight against Golovkin, he suffered an eye injury, which um, sort of exacerbated, you know, the downfall of his career. But what really led to the downfall of his career, in my opinion was the fact that Kell Brook's ego sort of got the better of him. And rather than continue with what would have worked best for him, which is, in my personal opinion, remain at middleweight, which was his natural weight division, or 154, which is a, a division where he was uh, very sharp and very strong, very healthy and very um, durable. Unfortunately, he decided to go back down to welterweight to defend his title, and the reason why he did that, in my opinion, was because he couldn't face the thought of being accused of ducking Errol Spence, because a lot of people were saying that he was scared to fight Errol Spence, so it was as if Kelbrook's ego uh, didn't allow him to avoid that fight, so he went down, he drained himself, he was, he was in horrible condition for the fight, he was just, he was emaciated, if you go and watch the weigh-in, Kelbrook just didn't look right to me for that fight, you know, he had to move down two divisions, um, coming off the, the loss to Triple G where he got beaten up and ended up with a, a broken eye socket. Taking on Errol Spence when he did and fighting him while he was weight drained, it was a, a silly, silly career move, in my opinion, from Kelbrook. And I think it was that, personally, that ruined his career. Um, had he stayed at middleweight, had he maybe taken a little bit of time off and um, built his name at 154 to, to middleweight, um, I, I think he could have had a lot of success. I mean, you saw what he was able to do against the likes of Sergei Rabchenko and um, Zarafa and people like that. He actually looked pretty good in those fights. He looked very solid and very tough and, and very strong and very powerful at 154. But sadly, again, it, it, was, it seemed like an ego thing to me. Like Terence Crawford um, fought Amir Khan. And, and, and it's as if Kelbrook saw that fight and thought, you know, I could do better against Crawford. So he, he again moved back down to welterweight, drained himself badly and uh, took the fight. And, and I just think it was a, I mean, whoever was advising Kelbrook throughout his career, just whether it was just, whether it was his advisors or whether it was him himself, I just don't think the guy was, was really that intelligent in terms of the way that he um, progressed in his career. Like he never really did what was best for him and what would have gotten the best out of him, so to speak. Like, I mean, moving back down to fight Errol Spence after the Golovkin fight was was ridiculous. I mean, it was it was just silly. It was a ridiculous move from Brook, in my opinion, that was never going to work out for him. I said so at the time. I had a lot of concerns about that fight personally, and um, fighting Crawford when he did when he'd been comp you know campaigning at one fifty four could have easily got a title shot there. 
moving down to fight Terence Crawford and, and just basically starving himself and, and dehydrating himself to make weight. It was never going to work out for him. And it seems as if he's going to be retiring now. And I actually, I, I really do agree with Delboy. I think that Kell Brook is one of the biggest wastes of talent in uh, British boxing. I really do. And it's a real shame because I thought that this guy was going to be a pound for pound great one day. I genuinely did think that he had the ability to do so. Um, you know, the, kind of the way I saw Kell Brook on the way up was somewhat similar to how I saw George Groves. And, and you might recall, I actually made a video when George Groves retired where I was saying that his career was a massive disappointment. I feel the same way about Brook. I think that George Groves' career was a disappointment based on the fact that I think he could have achieved personally a lot more than he than he did personally. I, I truly believe that. And uh, I feel the same way about Brook. I think the guy was a waste of talent. I think the guy could have been a lot better. I think he could have been a, a dominant champion at 154 and even a, a decent contender at 160. I really do. I mean, he was able to last longer against Triple G than a few of those other guys he fought, like, like, like for example, guys like Proxa, you know, who was a legit middleweight contender, you know, a European middleweight contender. You know, he was able to last longer than the likes of, um, who, who am I thinking of? You know, the, the likes of Marco Antonio Rubio and Dominic Wade and guys like that. You know, the, these were all middleweight contenders who, who Golovkin had blown away in a few rounds. You know, guys like Ashida. You know, it's not like these guys were chinny, um, weight-drained opponents. No, these guys were legit European and, and fringe contender-level middleweights who didn't tend to get stopped, and, and Triple G was blowing them away. So the fact that Kelbrook was able to take some shots off Triple G and, and was able to last as long as he did, I mean, I think he would have done well at middleweight. I do. I think he would have had a good career there. Um, I, I wouldn't have minded seeing him fight the likes of Billy Joel Saunders or um, Martin Murray and guys like that. I think those would have been good fights, personally. And, um, yeah, I, I think I think 154 would have been great for him. But, sadly, he just had this weird attachment to the welterweight division, it seems. I really don't know why. Um, some people would say that it's because he was a weight bully. And, yeah, he, he was, to some extent, at, at um, 154. Sorry, at welterweight. But, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, um, coulda, woulda, shoulda. I think he should have stayed at 154. Or, or at 160, and I think he could have had a great career there, but, I mean, clearly, he, he wasn't interested in middleweight, which is why he moved back down, and, um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say, but I, I totally agree with Del Boy, I recommend you watch his video, uh, Kelbrook definitely was a waste of talent, in my opinion, and it's a real shame, it really is, because looking back at his career in retrospect, um, I definitely had, um, as, as a boxing fan, I had high hopes for him, I thought he was going to go a lot further than he did. I remember seeing Kell Brook on the undercard of the Carl Froch andre Ward fight, and I remember the knockout he had on the undercard. And yeah, I, I just remember him seeming like such a energetic and um, talented fighter, and he really could have gone a lot further, in my opinion. So yeah, let me know what you guys think anyway. That's all I've got to say. Thanks for watching. God bless.